This review has been made possible by Chevrolet of Naperville. As you know, Chevy has tons of brand new cars and trucks available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to ChevroletofNaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2017 Chevy SS. Up front is a 6.2 liter V8, down below is a 6 speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by CarMarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. CarMarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the U.S. And before we get on to that engine, to that beautiful, beautiful V8, I have to point something out. So this is actually a used car from Chevy of Naperville, which thank you so much Chevy of Naperville for giving me this SS. But this is in fact a Chevy. If you've never seen this before, it might look weird. It actually, whoever owned this car before put the Australian badges on. So down in Australia, these cars are sold as the Holden Commodore. That's what they're more popularly known as. This is really a Australian car that we imported here, really, and they switched over to left-hand drive for us. And so the previous owner put different badges on it. I'll talk more about that later, but in the cinematic shots, when you see that weird lion or whatever that is, it's a Holden Commodore badge from Australia. The normal SS does look different, and I'll talk about that again more, but don't be freaked out. But let's get back to the reason this car is awesome, and that is the 6.2 liter LS3 V8. Oh man, I feel the mullet growing already. It is a powerful, powerful car. It's really a sleeper sedan, and again, I'll talk about that more when we talk about looks and stuff, but man, it's so understated and fast, and it's a brutal V8. It's a loud, true, I wanna say it's a loud, true American V8, that's not the case. It's a loud, tried and true Australian V8. If you are from Australia, this video is for you. And honestly, this car is for you. So we'll get it warmed up here on the test track, which might take a little bit because it is so freaking cold here. But once we do, the car's broken in 32,000 miles. Let's see what this thing can do. So car is warmed up. We're in performance. Get a little bit of audio. Um, just going to let the car shift itself. Here we go. Oh, it did not want to grip. <laughs> oh man, it did not want to grip at all. I get it. It's a it's a salty and cold day, but maybe we could roll into it a little bit more. Not gripping. <laughs> Oh man, but it sounds so glorious. Oh, that V8. Oh man, say what you want about Chevy. Say what you want about GM. They know how to make a V8 sound good. Oh man, I will, if I can get it, I'll play an audio clip here. Like I said, paired to it is a six-speed automatic. Uh, you'll find this in pretty much every GM, Cadillac, Chevy vehicle. I mean, it's it's really pretty common, and it, it shifts when I want it to. I do have paddle shifters, but besides that, it's nothing too crazy. Last thing about the transmission is that they do offer this in a manual. They did offer this sedan in a six-speed manual. This is not in the manual version. I wish it was, but I really wanted to get my hands on one of these, and so automatic will have to do. Last but not least, this is rear wheel drive. So that is sort of what makes this car more sporty, more you know, cutthroat is that it's all wheel drive. If you mess up, if you drive this thing in the rain, which I'm not saying you can't drive in the rain, you can, but if you mess up in the rain, you mess up in the snow, you mess up on any, you know, sort of slick surface, you're going to pay the consequences. And I, I kind of like that. It's sort of this riding the edge sort of feel with so much power and rear wheel drive. But let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauge pods. On the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature, and on the right is my speedometer and fuel. And then in the center, I do get a pretty typical little Chevy gauge. You know, nothing too crazy. I can switch between vehicle info, battery voltage, trip and fuel, and then my just speed and digits. It's very basic. Although I do have a heads up display in front of me telling me my time, my compass, which direction I'm pointing, 
and then the outside temperature, which is 21 degrees, which makes me so sad. On the steering wheel, I do have cruise control on the left, my volume source and audio controls on the right. Very simple, and like I said, it does have those paddle shifters on the back. To the left, I have my heads-up display options, headlights, nothing really too crazy. And then on the door, I have lock and unlock, two different memory seats, as well as the get out button and my power windows and power mirrors. I like the door a lot. It's finished in a little bit of Alcantara with some red stitching. It's overall a, a nice door. I mean, it sounds like, it sounds like the cheesiest pickup line ever. Hey girl, you got nice doors. But it, it has a nice door. It has nice doors, like legit. So in the center, we do have an infotainment screen. I'm very back and forth on it. I, I like the fact that it is very colorful. It looks fairly modern. Again, 2017, it's only three years ago. You could do Bluetooth, USB in. I mean, I have Pandora, Weather, Stitcher Smart Radio, a lot of different things, a lot of different audio options and everything you basically need which is really, really nice. But the reason I, I, I'm kind of hesitant on it is it's just the normal Chevy infotainment system that they use in every other car, which isn't bad. It's not a bad system. It's just, I don't know what I want from this car, really. I kind of want it to be more special, but I kind of don't. It's, it's very weird. But down below the radio, I do have my actual tactile radio control options, as well as off to the left, I have heated and cooled seats which I cannot turn on simultaneously. But then down below that, I have my typical, normal, average heating and air conditioning controls. Really nothing crazy here, although I do get dual zone and auto climate, so that is definitely a very, very nice feature. Then I have a little 12 volt outlet, a little cubby hole pad area, and then the shifter. The shifter's nice. It feels like a Cadillac shifter. I mean, I keep saying it, but it feels like a CTS or, or anything like that. I mean, it, it's very similar. I think I drove the same year Cadillac CTS V-Sport, so I'll link that at the end of the video if you're interested in that. That's a twin turbo V6, but it feels very similar to that. I'm sure they share parts. If not, they're very, very similar. Then, I do have a couple very interesting buttons down below. We'll start with the lame one, which is a power parking brake, bleh. Then off to the right, we have traction control off, parking sensors off, things like that. And then we have mode select. So I'll pull up here and let's talk about some of the modes. So we have tour, move it over to sport, performance, and that's it. So we have three modes of tour, sport, and performance. Now the seats are nice and comfortable. They are leather with a little bit of an Alcantara insert and they do say SS on them, which I like a lot. And so is the dashboard. I forgot to mention that. It's finished in a nice Alcantara and it says SS. Now I really like these SS accents. I think they really add to the interior and remind you that you are driving something special because getting stuck in this in traffic, it's just like getting stuck in a Malibu in traffic or getting stuck in literally any other vehicle in traffic. So it's nice to look over and remember you have something special. You have one of the best sleeper sedans ever made and that, that's nice. But speaking of seats, we actually do a back seat. This is a sedan. So let's do a back seat review. I'm sure a lot of you have seen Chevy SS reviews, but have you seen one from a guy with Olaf on his socks? I think not. All right, so we're in the back of the 2017 Chevy SS. So much leg room. I have st so much legroom right off the bat. I mean, I can fully stretch out my knees. I'm not hitting the front seats. This is what makes the SS so special because if you want a coupe version, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I just want a coupe version of that, then congratulations. You just invented the Camaro that's been around for 40 years. This is a full tried and true sedan. And so, yes, can you take three or four people in your Camaro? Yes. It's not as comfortable as this. This is the full adult. This is when you had a Camaro in your 20s, then you upgrade and you buy this in your 30s, 40s, 50s. This is what you move to once you have a family, once you have to get something more sensible. You actually have to take adults around. No, no adult, no self-loving adult is going to willingly get into the back of a coupe Camaro. It's just not going to happen. And so this, this feels from back here, Audi. This feels BMW. This feels good. This feels great back here. And so some of the amenities, I do have two vents back here. Nothing too crazy. Power windows, sure. Little Alcantara inserts here as well. And then I do have this tiny little, <laughs> well, that's anticlimactic. This tiny little 
It's on a console that doesn't even have cup holders. I don't get any cup holders back here, actually, which is good because you will spill your drink on every acceleration or corner. You don't wanna spill on this beautiful leather. But that's it, it's a very basic back seat. I don't get many amenities. I mean, this isn't a Mercedes S-Class, but you have a full back seat. I, I, I don't think this is really coming through. You have a full back seat in a car with a 6.2 liter V8 and possible manual transmission. Is it sticking yet? This is the perfect sedan. Now I'll show you the trunk space because, you know, one person on the internet's probably wondering. But uh, let me do a cool transition. Now we gotta talk about the looks. This is where it's gonna come back into play that these are not the normal badges, although the car looks the same otherwise. So I think that it looks really, really good. And if it weren't for those holding badges, this would be such an understated sleeper car. No one really knows what this car is besides car nuts, besides car enthusiasts like myself who spend every waking moment talking about or researching cars to the point of exhaustion. We know what these are. And I'm sure if you're watching this video as a fan, I'm sure you know what this is, but people in traffic have no idea. And so the stock body of this car with the stock badges, if they just had the Chevy badges, you would think that's a Malibu with a a little bit more enticing face. I mean, that's really it. And so I kind of want to rant about those Holden badges for a second. Whoever put those Holden badges on, uh, it, 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 it sort of ruins what this car was kind of meant to be, which was just a subtle sleeper sedan that'll blow the doors off an STI without you really knowing it. Again, it, the stock version looks like a Malibu. But then once you throw those Holden badges on, now you're getting people's attention. Now you're getting a lot of outside, possibly unwanted attention. And so that sort of ruins it for me, at least here in America. But I think it's a really, really understated sedan. And I think honestly, as cool as it is, as much as I love an understated, get in, do the job and get out car, I think this was actually its downfall. Cause this was actually only a four year vehicle from 2013 to 2017 is when these cars were made. This is actually the final year of the Chevy SS. And yes, that is its name, the Chevy SS. Probably the shortest name you can make it, I don't know. Well, I guess Mazda has the three, which is just one character. So almost the shortest name you can have is SS, literally two letters and the same letter at that, which in the past, the Chevy SS's have been trim packages of other cars. I've done the Impala SS, the Trailblazer SS. It stands for Super Sport. And so it was a trim package or performance package added on to other vehicles. This is just a Chevy SS, so it's like a rolling trim package. Of what, exactly? And I don't think many people knew. I think people knew the SS name from the Impala and the Trailblazer, but I don't think they really, they're like, is that an Impala SS? Is that a Caprice SS? Which, like, essentially it is. Hopefully, I'll get my hands on a Caprice PPV soon. But I, 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 I don't think the general public really knew what it was because let's look at other performance sedans the m3 has been around since the 80s everyone knows the m3 is a performance sedan same with amg because that's an added on name to an already existing vehicle this is like if mercedes came out with the 2020 amg it doesn't really make sense and so i think the name kind of hurt it the name and the subtle looks sort of killed this car off, which is a shame because, man. <laughs> because this is such a fun car. I mean, it's just, oh man. You just put your foot into it and it just, any sort of hard throttle into the corner and I'm kicking that rear end out. That was like a quarter throttle. This thing is a monster. This thing is a beast. And what I love about it is that it's so subtle and so understated and, and 
no one understands it. This is the underdog sort of story. I absolutely love that. You know, I hate people who are out and brash. It, it, it succeeds in secrecy. I wish I could make that the title of this video, but I, I don't really think that would convey any sort of, wow, I gotta go see it sort of thing. But this succeeds in secrecy. Not a whole ton of these were made. Not a whole ton of these were sent here. And yes, in other countries, they got it as the Holden Commodore and the Vauxhall something or other in Europe. And while they went under different names, I mean, how secret agent is that? It has different aliases around the world. I mean, how James Bond is that? Gets in, gets out, doesn't make a scene. Well, I guess James Bond makes a scene. So how secret agent is that, we'll say. I feel like this car is like a spy. I don't know. It's like, I just, I love the fact that it isn't in your face about the fact that it'll rip your doors off. I absolutely love that. And so the Holden badges on this car here in America kind of ruin that, but still, man, I love this thing. Oh, traction control telling me to sit back down. I am seated traction control, and I am seated in one of the best cars I've driven in a while. Oh man, we're gonna give her one more go to send out the video, just cause, I mean, come on. Oh yeah, yeah. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Huge thank you to Chevy of Naperville for getting me into this Chevy SS. This is a beautiful masterpiece, and I wish that they still made it. It's a shame that they don't. But thank you so much to Chevy of Naperville. If this is not your thing, this is one of their used cars, by the way. If this is not your thing, if you don't like Chevy SS, if you want a Malibu, if you want a Spark, if you want a whatever it is, check out ChevyofNaperville.com. If those even aren't your thing, still check them out. They have tons and tons of used cars. They have a, a C5 Corvette on the lot right now. They have a, a turbocharged Volkswagen Beetle. They got a bunch of fun stuff. So definitely go check out their website. I'll leave it down in the description below as well as it's up on the screen. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to take care guys I, I, I